Oh, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is too nice of a day out today to not be doing something on the car, so vlog time. So a couple of things, I'm still dialing in the ride height of the car now that we've been driving it for a few weeks, just letting those BC coilovers settle a little bit. Um, and then we'll, you know, so we're, I'm kind of just, I'm dialing in the firmness with the dampening knobs, uh, but also, like I said, letting it kind of relax and settle a little bit so we can pick a final ride height. I think we're getting there to where I've put enough miles on it now uh, to where, you know, we may still see some settling over the next couple of months or so, but I think it'll be very minimal. So um, I'm going to raise the rear, believe it or not, raise the rear maybe another quarter to a half an inch. I can barely fit a finger uh, between the wheel and the wheel well right now. Uh, so I just want to get it up just a touch and then it'll allow me to soften the settings a little bit more, make it more of a, a comfortable ride. And then I can always stiffen it up when we go to the track or, or um, you know, doing some spirited mountain runs or something like that. And unfortunately, I've already messed up one of the brake calipers. Uh, I'll show you that in a little bit and uh, we'll try to remedy the problem. At least the car has stayed clean over the last couple of days. Oh my God, a couple of days, it's terrible. Hopefully more sunny days are ahead of us, but for now she's not looking too bad. So I'm just gonna brace the uh, front here and get the car in the air, pull the back wheels off, and then we'll get to adjusting the coilovers. Probably not gonna show you that whole process. You've, you've all seen it before. I'm still loving the Forged R F 14s. Uh, there's no doubt about that. And I'm still, still really digging the big brake upgrade. Glad I did that. Everything is functioning properly. And uh, I love it. But God, I can't believe I ruined the caliper already. Jeez. Time for the next side. Okay. Will you hold the camera for me? Guys, I fear, based on the other side, that I may have raised it too much. A quarter of an inch might have just been too much. Let's see. Oh, it slammed, so it a little pressure on it. Set in here. to the second knuckle about that it might actually be okay uh, it's kind of I mean it's tucked a little you mean you got to go at an angle that might be all right no oh, we'll have to see it from a distance I know I'd mentioned this before uh, but I've been taking notes on uh, my settings for the coil ever since installing them. This is just kind of what they look like. So, yeah. So I put the ride height. Uh, <clears throat> and then when I made adjustments to the ride height, uh, and then adjustments to the dampening setting. So you can see on the 14th of February, I was at negative 7 in the rear, negative 9 in the front. And some of my... Um, some of my notes were stiff, a little bit jarring, nice in the corners, a little bit of wheel hop in the rear. Uh, and then the next day, I adjust the negative nine, negative nine. I wrote still a bit stiff, um, but it mostly was felt in the rear. Good mountain setup. Daily? No. <laughs> oh, it's stuck. So we 
squeeze the car a quarter of an inch in the rear only front is still pretty low front is tucked i also softened the dampening settings two more notches to the soft side so i think if i remember correctly from the notes we're at a minus 13 and at a minus 10 up front is that right yeah, i think so the neighborhood road has some imperfections in it it's relatively smooth but i there's there's some, definitely some imperfections that i really pay attention to in adjusting these settings and the trip out of the neighborhood didn't seem so bad this time around four minutes it's really not too bad it's very bright what this has nothing to do with the video ask it <laughs> okay can I have friends over tonight? Negative. <laughs> I don't know. You can't. This side is not no good because it's leaning toward the garage. So oh, we gotta. We're gonna have to find some flatter ground. It's too bright. This side looks good. All right. I think this is some level ground. Give you an idea how the car looks now again after raising it about just a quarter of an inch in the rear not terrible um, it, it looks pretty good it looks pretty good it could come down just a touch i mean it's not like you're seeing the top of the tire This side looks a little bit better, but again, I'm not sitting in the car, so let's use this. Just looking sharp. It's blue caliper there, boy. Still, I don't think we're rubbing. Man, this shit looks good though, fellas. I guess it's time to show you what the problem is with the damn calipers. Now, truly, I don't want to lie to you and say this is my fault, you know, but it sort of is. I, I, I didn't ruin the paint on the calipers. Sort of. <laughs> what had happened was when I bled the brakes, I was very, very careful. I, I used um, some tube, actually some old fuel, uh, like fuel line that you'd use for like a motorcycle or a, a lawnmower. Uh, it fit very snugly over the bleeding ports and it worked great. Uh, but when I did this first one, I didn't realize that there was a little bit of uh, brake fluid that had sort of dripped out and it kind of ran down a little bit on the caliper. And I'll show you that, but if you know anything about brake fluid is that it eats away paint. And unfortunately, I didn't notice it before I had buttoned everything back up and I didn't have a chance to wipe it off. So it did, uh, it did have a negative effect. And I'll show you. So you can see right here where it had dripped. It kind of had... Let's see. It had pooled up. A little bit right around here uh, when I wiped when I eventually noticed it and wiped it off uh, it was kind of pulled in this little rubber uh, neck here and it just had kind of dripped down here um, and a little bit had kind of kind of meandered its way right here and I wiped it off and of course as I uh, wipe a little bit and clean it off it peeled a little bit more off so that's it it's not terrible it's not real real bad uh, but I'm just gonna clean up the up the edges here because it went all the way through primer and everything uh, of course so I'm just gonna clean it up hit it with a little bit of sandpaper and uh, then I'm gonna mask it off as best I can and just kind of dust it in there just to cover this area up to make it look better but god they, they still look good no doubt about that it just sucks that this is uh, luckily though it was only the one and again it was my fault for just not paying attention if I would have wiped it off early it wouldn't have been a problem at all, but here we are uh, making fixes. So I'm just, like I said, I'm just gonna hit this with a little 600 grit sandpaper, just kind of smooth out the edge, uh, give the surrounding paint a little bit of teeth. And I'll mask it off really good and just try to spot paint it. And uh, 
we'll get her looking fresh. One coat done. Money. Um, and I think the car rides good now. So we're negative 10 in the front, negative 13 in the rear. Uh, we can stand to go a little bit stiffer if we need to. And I think we even have a little play to go a little bit softer in the rear. Uh, if we want to as well but i think right now just driving around a little bit this is this is money guys this is money right now wasn't a whole lot going on with this video but important stuff nonetheless it's uh it's important to get all this stuff dialed in and situated before springtime because track events are about to begin here shortly and uh just you know we, we gotta we gotta be ready don't forget guys to check out my other videos over 250 of them uploaded at this point and just recently we did a color changing uh, front emblem, color changing LED front emblem from, Halis from Halisco's carbon fiber. We also did the front bumper sequential signals, uh, which not many people have right now. So you wanna make sure you check out JR Lights on Instagram. That's JR underscore lights on Instagram and be one of the first to have these. Like I said, not very many people have the sequential front signals. I do. And if you check him out, you can be too. I know he's got more uh, on order coming in stock, so we can get them out to you uh, relatively quickly. Um, check the description below for additional information if that's something that interests you guys. But I like them so far. They look awesome. Totally unique. And uh, in combination with that LED front emblem from Aliscos. Sick. Gotta go uh, do dad things conference call or conference with the teacher uh, planning on end of the year stuff and uh, next year in high school trying to wrap up some core courses and whatnot anyway you guys don't care about that i'm sure um oil change for the q50 this weekend uh, hopefully some driving stuff i want to finally do the um, spirit of drive with the paddle shifters video i think that needs to come up now it's been a long time coming and i finally just going to take the time to do the video and uh, that's about it so Hopefully this was informative. Probably it was worthless video to you guys, but nonetheless, I appreciate you watching very much and we'll see you in the next one.